Hi everyone, I'm Tracy from Science Buddies, and today I'll be showing you how to make a random forest machine learning model that can predict whether a patient had thyroid cancer recurrence. But first, what is thyroid cancer recurrence? Any cancer can return, even after successful treatment, which is why it is important to make regular follow-up appointments. In the case of thyroid cancer, it has a recurrence rate of about 5-30%, to and this depends on multiple factors, such as age, the initial stage of cancer at diagnosis, the type of thyroid cancer, and much more. Instead of trying to map out which factors are most significant in predicting thyroid cancer recurrence by hand, we can instead use machine learning. In this project, we will be pre-processing a dataset of thyroid cancer patients to create a random forest model that can predict whether a patient will have thyroid cancer recurrence. Check out the project page linked in the description to learn more about the random forest algorithm. More specifically, we will apply two different types of encoding, label encoding and one-hot encoding. When working with machine learning algorithms, it is important to convert categorical variables into numbers, since algorithms understand numbers better than words. For example, algorithms can understand 0, 1, 2, 3, but don't necessarily understand the difference between a watermelon, an apple, blueberries, and avocado. To help our machine learning model learn our data, we can assign these values integers. For example, in this data set, we have a feature called adenopathy, which has values no, right, extensive, left, bilateral, and posterior. Adenopathy is the inflammation of glandular tissue or lymph nodes, and depending on where it is located, the patient's condition may be more or less severe. We can assign no to zero, and then since left and right are essentially the same condition, just on different sides of the neck, we can assign both to one, and then posterior to two, bilateral to three, and extensive to four. However, one thing to make note of is that label encoding assigns an order. This is because numbers have an order, because of course two is greater than one, and three is greater than two, and so on. This may lead to the algorithm mistake that there is some ordinal relationship between each condition. And in the case of adenopathy, this makes sense because we assigned it in order of least to most severe. But if we don't want our machine learning model to mistake our data in having some ordinal relationship, we can perform one-hot encoding instead. We can use one-hot encoding on features where there is no clear order. For instance, for our thyroid function feature, Hyperthyroidism isn't necessarily better or worse than hypothyroidism, so it is better to use one-hot encoding instead of label encoding. One-hot encoding will create a new column for every variable, and then if the row does have that variable, it will be labeled 1 and then 0 for everything else. In this table, patient 1 has clinical hyperthyroidism, patient 2 has clinical hypothyroidism, patient 3 has euthyroid, Patient 4 has subclinical hyperthyroidism, and patient 5 has subclinical hypothyroidism. Now let's get on to the project. Remember that you can find the link to this project page in the description box below. From here, you want to scroll down. And for a more in-depth understanding of this project, make sure to read the introduction. Then you want to scroll down to here and download the Python notebook as well as the CSV file. Then you want to navigate to your My Drive, create a new folder called Thyroid Cancer Recurrence, and then you just want to upload both the Python notebook and the CSV file. You can take a quick look at the data by double-clicking on the CSV file, and this is the dataset that we'll be using for our project. Take a few moments to explore the dataset. And then to open the notebook, you can just double click on it. Now that we have the notebook open, we can now get started on the coding portion of our project. First, we want to import these libraries. We'll just make some functions that we'll be using available in our project. And then we'll mount the Google Drive so that we can use the dataset that we uploaded earlier. And then we'll load our data into a data frame so that we can manipulate it to use in our random forest algorithm. Now, we'll start with the label encoding portion of this project. First, we'll be label encoding the features that only have yes or no as a value. And those features are HX smoking, 
HX radiotherapy and record. Make sure that you are putting quotes between each feature name and a comma in between. Run this block. We can now see for these features it's 0 and 1 instead of no and yes. We'll do the same for the features that only have two values, which are gender, focality, and M, and then run this code block. Now we'll work on label encoding the features that have an order to them. First, we can run this code block to see exactly which values are available in physical examination. And for this, we can see we have single nodular goiter left, multi-nodular goiter, single nodular goiter right, normal, and diffuse goiter. And these conditions actually have an order to which it is least to most likely to cause thyroid cancer recurrence. And you can read more about each of the conditions on the project page. But for now, we know that normal is the least likely to cause thyroid cancer recurrence. And then next is diffuse goiter. And then we can just map that to one since we started with zero. And then next is single nodular goiter left. We'll assign that to two. And actually, single nodular goiter left and right are the same condition, just on different sides of the neck. So we can also assign single nodular goiter right to two. And then the last one is multi-nodular goiter. And we'll map that to three. We can now see the new values in physical examination are numbers instead of these conditions earlier. Now let's move on and the next feature will be label encoding is adenopathy. And so to see the unique values of adenopathy, we can use this code block as a guide. We can copy and paste it and instead of physical examination, just type in adenopathy and then run it. And we can see these are the different values for adenopathy. And we have also put the details of each condition in the project page. But to map each condition, you do the same thing. So we'll go with right colon and we'll map this to one. And again, right and left are the same condition, just on different sides. So we'll also map left to one. And next is posterior to two by oops bilateral to three and extensive to four and we can see our new table and now we can see that adenopathy is also mapped to a number instead of its original value. Note that if you get an error like this, it is likely that you misspelled one of these values. So just go through them one at a time and you can also just simply copy and paste. And I can see that I spelled hearthly wrong. So I'll just copy and paste the new value. And then run again. And if that doesn't work, go to runtime, run before, and run this one again. And for the rest of the section 1.1.2, label encoding with order, you can just use the first four blocks as a model and read the project instructions for more details. Now, the one hot encoding section is very simple because we provide you with the code. Now, lucky for us, one hot encoding is very simple because we imported many libraries earlier. So let's just run this code, which creates a one hot encoder object and fits it to the thyroid function column. And then we'll run the next code block. And we can now see that luckily a lot of people have euthyroid, which is a normal working thyroid and this person has clinical hyperthyroidism. Now let's run the next code block, which simply adds the new columns to the end of our original dataset. And of course, we don't need this thyroid function column anymore since we have all of this information over here. So we can just drop that in this next code block. 
Now it's time to split our data into train and test. But first we'll split our data set into inputs and target by running this code. And we can quickly look at what inputs look like by adding a new code block, typing in inputs and then enter. So we can see that it is everything except for the column recurred. We can also look at target, which is that recurred column that we are trying to predict. And now that we know which features we are using to predict and which one we are predicting, we can now split the data into train and test by running this code. So this first number 306 means that in the training data, we have 306 patients for our model to train on, and it is using 19 different features. Those 19 features are what we saw earlier, which are age, gender, smoking, etc. Everything except for this recurred column. And of course, the Y train also has 306 patients because all of those patients already know whether they had recurrence or not. And since we are just predicting on one feature, there is no number here. And same deal with the X test, 77 patients with 19 different features trying to predict whether they had recurring cancer or not. We are finally ready to make a random forest model and that's easy because all we need to do is run this code block. This was again easy because of the libraries that we imported earlier. Then we we'll train the model by running this code block. And now that we have a fully trained model, we are ready to see how our model did. We can see approximately how accurate our model was by running this code. And we see it's pretty good, around 99%. We can also see exactly what our testing data look like by running this one. This is our test data. And this is what our model predicted. And we can see, you know, zero lines up with zero, zero, zero. 1, 1, 1, 1. So yeah, it looks pretty accurate if you go through these one at a time to make sure they line up. We can see what each of the decision trees in our random forest model look like by running this code. And you can change some of these values like the tree number and the max depth. We can see for this tree responses at the top right now, but this is only one of the decision trees and we can change this value to see another one. So let's go to tree number one. And we can see now stages at the top. Usually the feature at the top is the feature that was the most significant in predicting the recurrence of thyroid cancer in patients. So play around with the other trees and see which ones tend to be at the top. By default, there are 100 trees in the random forest model so you can change this number between 0 and 99. We can also change the depth of the tree and it's currently set to 2 because 1, 2. But let's change this to a bigger number like maybe 40. And now we can see a much bigger and in-depth tree. Our next visualization is the feature importance map which we can create just by running this code block. This graph shows which features were the most important and least important in determining whether a patient had thyroid cancer recurrence. What were the top three and why do you think they are the most important? Our last visualization is the ROC and AOC curve and this is more advanced topic so if you want to learn more, please check out the project page. For part two, you create a new model that will process the data again with fewer features. The idea is to see if the top three features can have a similar accuracy to processing all of the features. More details about part two can be found on the project page. And remember that at any point, if you run into an error in part two, try runtime and then run before and then run the current cell you are at. And then for part three of this project, try a different combination of features. And some examples can be found on the project page as well. And with that, we finish this tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions for this project linked in the description below. And for over a thousand other projects in science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.